Sandy, I'm looking forward to having you in the commentary box with me because you really have a, a great feel for what it's like out there in the arena. You've competed there this year yourself. What is it like? Give me a pen portrait well, of it. Well, it, it's extremely nerve-wracking, Peter. I mean, everybody out there is watching you, and they're all judges in their own right, and the pressure is enormous. And unless you're really calm and relaxed and in control, the dog can do all sorts of funny things, you know, and react to how you feel when you're out there. So if you're not feeling composed, the dog's likely to make mistakes? Oh, definitely, definitely, yes. And really, the winner is the one that holds it all together, definitely. When you look around the benches here b before, and everyone seems very relaxed, but is it a very nerve-wracking experience? Oh, the build-up is absolutely tremendous, and um, I mean, Crufts is unique. I mean, there's nothing like it in the world for us dog people. And you get all these lovely cards and all these well wishes, and it's absolutely fantastic, and nobody would ever miss it. But your stomach sort of drops right down to your feet, you know. Yes. But on the day, you go in there, and your little dog, he just works his heart out for you, and you really can't ask for anything more than that. The obedience competition takes place over two days. The dog competition was the first one on Thursday and the bitch competition on the Friday. We're looking at the heel work. This is the longest of the disciplines, the longest of the exercises that the dogs and handlers have to perform. This is obedience champion Biscuit Dan with Dot Watts. Uh, Dot is a very experienced handler. She's uh, competed at Crufts for 12 years and never done any good here actually. Um, she has made up five obedience champions. This is the stand position. Uh, it's called the advanced stand sitting down. And on instruction from the steward, uh, you are commanded to put your dog in a position. And that was pretty good. The heel work is very extensive. There are a number of positions that have to be taken. We're looking at Southcombe Firebird with Roy Neal now. And they're shortly going to come up to what was, in fact, the second position that they had to take on that side of the arena. Yeah, this is um, a very calm and steady dog, but holds a very good heel position. Uh, unfortunately, his wife also should be competing today, but her dog been taken ill, so she wasn't able to join her husband. The dog uh, is now just coming up to the next position, which is the down. And what the judge is looking for here is quick response to the down and the handler picking the dog up at the right point, which is level with his left leg. There. This is a very precise art, isn't it? Well, it is, yes, Taste definitely. The, the dogs have to perform at slow, medium and fast pace. A uh, whole one, range of exercises. Just listen to the steward. Left turn onto the tape. Fred Took there, giving the instruction. You can see the tape, and in fact, in this case, We've got Beryl Kelly and Obedience Champion on a promise they didn't quite make the line. No, I mean, I don't think the instructions were quite clear. He said left turn onto the tape, and she was slightly off it, so really she should have walked onto the tape then. A very hard discipline, this, to do. Obedience Champion Canasta replay with John Higgins. We said there were various positions they had to take up. They're coming to the third. Yeah, this is the sit position, which he performed very well. This is a very stylish dog, and when you get this type of style, it's more difficult to maintain the accuracy and therefore requires more skill. Yes, bobbing away there, as you say, probably quite difficult, but that's the way they work. The second discipline was the send away. That's where they're being sent to. There's a marker board on the edge boards of the arena. There are two red lines marked and two other markers as well. So it's a big enough target for the dog to be sent to. This is obedience champion Marina Moss of Maradona with Pat Randall. Send your dog. It's a good run out. But he, outside the lines. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, he overshot the line. It was a superb send away, right, nevertheless, and he did go down on command. But he's lost uh, four marks for being out of the area. Which is possibly a little harsh. The judge is uh, Ron Mitchell from Epsom, but he is the judge, and what he says goes. Well, this is obedience champion Darkbeck Houdini with Diane Weston, still on the send away. Send your dog. Well, this, this dog seems to be going well. Now he's hesitated, and a slow drop. And he's not inside the two tapes. 
In fact, they lost five, which is uh, only one more than the previous dog. And you, to your mind, not quite as good. No, I don't think so. No. Cheruska Chris Moss with Janet Matthews. Now, here's an example of a pretty good send away. Yes, and uh, this dog um, apparently is his favourite exercise send away, and you can see why. Right in the middle of those parallel lines. Lost just half a point on the whole exercise, probably for a crooked sit at the end. I, I think it might have been that collection, actually. Didn't like the knock into the hand, really. But well, that's more or less how it ought to be done. Lovely. The third discipline is the retrieve. We're looking at obedience champion Biscuit Dan again with Dot Watts. The object that's being thrown is a, a Christmas cracker. Very festive. Yes, and uh, ha um, viewers might like to know that the handlers were given the cracker at the end and it had a miniature gilt picture frame in as a present from the judge. Oh, that was nice. Well, that was perfect according to Ron Mitchell. No points lost. This is Long Halves May Daybin. Michelle Newman, the handler. Not a good pick up. The dog ran on and then dropped it, and a very hesitant and mouthy return. And three points on what perhaps is the easiest of the exercises, so a bit unfortunate there. This is obedience champion Red Hot Toddy with Mary Ray. They won this competition the last year in uh, Earl's Court. Yeah, Toddy's a very biddable dog, lovely dog. Take it. Finish. And Mary and the dog in matching colours. In distant control, the dogs have to take up six different positions when commanded by their handlers. The positions have to be taken smoothly, precisely, and the handler gives his instructions from something like 20 yards away. We're looking at obedience champion Dysart Zizel with Jim Egg. That's a good response. A little bit hesitant there. You can see the dog's not quite stood, and I believe he lost half a mark for that position. Did the rest very precisely in what is an extremely noisy arena. There are all sorts of uh, distractions going on there. A lot of people, a lot of noise. And the dogs still have to work absolutely precisely. They did only lose that half point. Starbank Boy is handled by Billy Richardson. Again, on distant control. Yes, you can see this dog, he should have gone into the stand there and went into the sit, so that means he missed a position. But this is Billy's first time at Crufts, and with all the noise and distraction you just mentioned, it's very difficult for the handler to get it quite right. He won't have done his nerves any good if it's his first time there when uh, the dog gets that first movement wrong. But the rest was precise and they lost six points on distant control. Now for an example of perfect distant control, Chris Briggs with Patois, Kobo Jim. Yes, Chris is always such a relaxed and uh, casual handler. And because he's so relaxed and casual, the dog responds immediately to his commands, and so you get a very good example of this exercise. Looks as though he's thoroughly enjoying it. The dog, then. Yes, yes, and he's well back behind the line. In the exercises that really test the dog's long-term concentration, the sit and the down, nothing happened that was going to affect the results, so we move on to the scent discrimination. Four dogs in contention. The dogs have to go out and collect a cloth with the judge's scent on it. It's as simple as that. Well, not really. Here we see uh, the judge, Ron Mitchell, handing a cloth to Chris Briggs, who's handling Patois Kobo Jim. They're in contention. That cloth's got the judge's scent on it. In the pattern, there are two decoy cloths with other scents, plus some neutral cloths, and the one that Patois Kobo Jim has to find. Just walked over it, that's the one. It's the correct one. Looks like a good return. Ron Mitchell found just half a point yeah. to go there. I think it was to the finish, actually. It was a little bit round there. Obedience champion Darkbeck Houdini also in with a chance here with Diane Weston. 
Bertie actually is a very young dog still. And Deanne made him up into a champion this year. Doing a lovely discrimination now. That's the right one. You can always tell if they get their heads down so they do actually sniff at the cloths, you know that they're working, don't you? That's right. These, these are partnership, a very good team. Looks like a crooked sit again there, Peter. Actually went clear. Ron Mitchell didn't think so. Obedience champion Red Hot Toddy with Mary Ray. Well, they've got a chance. No strangers to this ring. They've already won this championship in the past. Could it be again today? Well, Toddy looks to be very careful about it. Checking everything. That's the one. It's always in the same place, of course. Uh, they lost half a point, which put them level with obedience champion Dartbeck Houdini. Equal in second place at the moment. Patwar Kobo Jim was in the lead. It all hung on this. Obedience champion Biscuit Dan with Dot Watts. They could afford to lose one point and still win. Now, what's Dot thinking at this moment? I think Dot is probably just hoping the dog's going to go out there and do the scent, and she's trying to be calm about it. It is a very nerve-wracking moment. It he all hangs on it. He seems to be pretty confident, and he's discriminating well. Oh, checking the red dot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a wonderful moment for Dot. She really does deserve this. They could afford a crooked sit for half a point, but they don't do one. It's oh, all super. clear. Absolutely super. She really does deserve that. One of the most popular wins in recent years, then obedience champion Biscuit Dan for Dot Watts wins. Patwar Koba Jim second. Dartbeck Houdini just beats Red Hot Toddy in the runoff for third place. In the bitch obedience competition held on the Friday, it also came down to the scent discrimination as a decider with just four dogs in contention. We're looking at the first of them, obedience champion Dybeck Kirsty with Maureen Olcock. Same pattern of cloths. That is the right one. They were in with a very good chance here. Only one and a half points were separating the four pitches in contention. And they lost just half a point on probably that final position. Yeah, it looked like that. Judge Ron Mitchell is now about to cast his eye over the next pair in contention. Obedience champion Rosebank Magic Sunshine with Carol Clack. If they go clear, they'll tie with the previous dog. Actually, uh, Peter, this little dog's uh, pet name at home is uh, Treasure Bum, because <laughs> she's such a lovely little dog, and uh, she's working all the cloth, but she's gone over the judge's one there. Now she's just checked the decoy back there. Of course, there's no time limit been set by Ron Mitchell on this, so they can take their time. That's right, that's right. Gone over it again, now she's back for it. Good. Well, they need to go clear to stay in contention. Oopsie. Well, actually, they get away with that. Ron Mitchell, very generous, says that's clear. Nothing lost. So they're tied in the lead. <laughs> if this couple can also go clear, they too will go into the lead. Lynn Anderson with obedience champion Dawn Lass. Well, Lynn is from Cheshire. And, uh, oh, look at that, super. She will be absolutely thrilled now. Just to get a place here will be fantastic for her. Well, unless they make a terrible mistake here, they will go into the lead. That's a very nice sit. That's clear. Yes, they're happy, no question about that. So, with one dog to go, that's obedience champion Minak Red Arrow with Mary Ray. We've got Lynn Anderson in the lead. Can this couple take it away from them? Well, although we're only seeing the scent, for me, this was the most outstanding round of the championship. And in all the years I've been coming to Crufts, which is 20 years, I haven't seen a better round. So I really do hope 
Roxy does the scent for her. Here she goes. That's it. Now this is when everyone has to hold their breath. She could present badly. Well, there's a few gasps there, but it looks good to me. Looks all right from this angle. They've got to go clear, though, to win. There's only half a point in it. There, the shout tells you everything. They are. They win. Confirmation, then, of the result. Minak Red Arrow wins. Dawn Lass is second. Run off again for third and fourth place. Dybeck Kirsty takes it from Rosebank. Magic Sunshine. Tremendous competition, very intense, but some of the events in the main ring, they're a little